I've got a MC class open here. Let's just make a scanner. Let's go scanner scnr equals new scanner system dot in. And then we'll have to import the scanner class. I'll just hit control shift O and that'll put import java dot util dot scanner. Now let's use our new scanner. Let's say system dot out dot println choose a username. And then we'll take in the username from the user using the scanner. So we'll go string username equals scnr dot next. Next just takes in the next set of characters up to the next space. And then let's print out whatever the user entered. We'll just go system.out.println username plus username. Let's run this right now and we'll enter a username, choose a username, and then scnr.next just comes in, takes the ASDF that we entered and stores it inside of the username. So dot next is what we use if we just want to take in one word or one set of characters up to a space. If we want to take in a whole line of input, then we use the dot next line. Let's just say system.out.println, enter a sentence. And then we'll take it in and store it into a sentence using dot next line. And we'll just print it back out again. Sentence plus sentence. And there's something that's going to go wrong when we run this right now. Let's run it and see what happens. We get choose a username. I'll enter ASDF and I'm going to hit enter. And then it's not going to stop and wait for us to put in another sentence. It's just going to go right to the next print statement. So we get username ASDF and then enter a sentence. And we didn't enter anything, but it still prints that sentence as though we've entered something. And that's because when we call scanner.next, then it leaves something in the buffer called the new line character. So when we typed ASDF here, then what happens is ASDF went into the buffer. The buffer is just the area in memory that holds keyboard input before anything actually happens with it. So we have ASDF in memory, and then there's also a new line character that gets entered in there when we hit enter. And when we called next, then it came in and it took ASDF, but it just left that new line character in there. So then when we called next line, then it came in and said, oh, there's something in the buffer, there's a new line character, let's just take that and that's the next line. So what we have to do if we're calling next followed by next line is we have to clear out the buffer. To clear out the buffer, we can just call next line and we won't even store the value that we take in anywhere. We're just gonna have an empty call to it. So I'll say clear the buffer and then we'll go scnr dot next line. And that'll just clear out the buffer for us. So then when it gets to the second call to next line, then it's gonna say, okay, there's nothing in the buffer. Let's just wait for some user input. So let's run this right now. And we get choose the username. This time we'll put the same thing. And now it says enter a sentence and it's stopped and it's waiting for us to enter our sentence in. So we'll enter a sentence and then it prints out our sentence. So everything is working okay now. And there's a few other scanner methods that do the same thing where they just leave that new line character in the buffer, which is a little bit annoying. We'll go over a few of those methods next. And generally when you're using scanners, you can try and remember that if something weird like that happens where it just jumps down to the next line without waiting for any input, then there's a decent chance there's a new line character left in the buffer. And a call to next line will always just clear that out for you. Next, let's just ask the user, what level are you? And then we're gonna store this value inside of an integer called level. We're gonna take it in with the method next int, which just goes into the buffer and grabs an integer. And then we'll print it back out, system.out.println level plus level. And next int is another example of one of those methods that leaves the new line character in there. It won't matter right now since we don't actually have a next call using our scanner, but we'll see what it does after. So we enter the username and then we can enter a sentence. And what level are you? We'll say level 100. So everything's working good. And let's make another call to next int. Let's say how much XP do you have? 
And again, we'll store this in an integer. We'll say int xp equals scnr dot next int. And you might think here that we would have to clear the buffer between both of our calls to next int, but next int actually skips any new line characters that are in the buffer. So we don't have to worry about clearing it if we're just making consecutive calls to next int. So let's print out that value for the XP. When we do have to worry about clearing out the buffer is when we call next int or next and then following those calls to next int or next, we want to do a call to next line because next line kind of gets confused by the new line character, whereas next int and next will just skip right over it. So let's print out the value from how much XP the user has. And then let's make another call to next. Let's say, what is your character's first name? And then we'll read that in using scnr.next. So we'll go string first name equals dot next. And then we'll just print out the first name system.out.println characters first name plus first name. So let's run this right now and everything will work okay because next we'll just skip the new line character that next int left in there and next int will also skip the new line character that the previous call to next int left in there. So let's run it and everything should go fine. We enter our username and a sentence and a level and a amount of XP and then our first name of the character. And there is something that could go wrong potentially with what we're doing right now. So if we went, choose the username, and then we enter the sentence. And when it asks for our level, if we said something like ASDF again and try and enter some characters, then we get an input mismatch exception. So our program has crashed. So let's put in some more code to deal with this so that the program doesn't crash and it just prints out a message if the user enters something that doesn't fit into the data type that they should be entering. I have a class that just has a scanner inside of it. Let's say system.outs.println enter a whole number. And then we'll use our scanner to read in a whole number and we'll just store it in the integer number. So number equals a call to next int. So let's run this right now. And of course it's gonna crash if we just put some characters in. So we get an input mismatch exception. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our call to next int inside of a while loop. And inside that while loop, there's gonna be a try catch block. So we'll just say while, and our condition is going to be not success. Or you can name yours whatever you want. Just a variable that stands for whether the value has been correctly read into number. So we'll make that variable just below number. I'll go boolean success equals false. Booleans are just variables that can only have two values, true or false. So here we're saying while not success. So while success is not true. And then we'll set success to true if a value is successfully read in. So we'll put a try catch block inside of here which is just something that surrounds code that can often make an error. So our code where we're trying to store a value inside of our number is likely to cause an error since someone might put characters in. So we just surround it with a try block saying, try and do this, but if it doesn't work, then catch the exception. The exception is pretty much just the Java word for an error. So we go catch exception E, and then we're just gonna go E dot print stack trace. Printing the stack trace is just what happened down here. Java automatically did it when our program crashed before. So we're gonna print it inside of our catch block. We're gonna say, hey, if it's not successful, then catch that exception and just print this error message. Since we're using a try catch block and a while loop, our program actually isn't going to crash when they enter though. So we'll still get this error message, but the program won't crash so they can try again to enter an integer value. So I'll just copy and paste that call to next int and we'll put it inside of our try block. And on the next line in the try block, let's just put success equals true. So if there's an error in trying to scan a number from next int into number, 
then the code isn't going to make it to this line. Instead, it's just going to go directly from this line here, line 14, down to our catch block. So success won't be set to true. The only way success is going to be set to true is if an integer is successfully scanned into number. And inside of our catch block, let's just print out a message. System.out.println, nice try, not an int. If we run this right now, it's not going to work. Let's see what happens. We get uh, enter a whole number, and then it's just going to enter a never ending loop if I enter something that's not a number. So it'll just keep printing out our stack trace and printing nice try, not an int. So I'll stop this. What we have to do is we have to clear the buffer because if scnr.nextInt isn't successful in scanning in an integer, then it just leaves whatever is in the buffer in the buffer. So we still have the characters that we entered in the buffer and it just keeps trying over and over and over to read in those characters. So in our catch block, we're just going to clear out the buffer. Below e.printStackTrace, let's just go scnr.nextLine, which will just clear out the buffer for us. So now if we run it, we get enter a whole number and we type in some characters and then it prints out our stack trace, which is just the input mismatch exception again. But this time it stops and it says, nice try, not an int. And we can just enter an integer now. So if we go 15, then it successfully enters in. I'll put in a message here just to show that it's actually taking it in. So if we say, nice try, not an int, try again and then below our catch block and our while loop, then we'll just print out the value that got scanned into a uh, number. Let's just put it inside of our try block because otherwise the number won't be in scope and I don't feel like moving it. So let's go system.out.println you entered plus number. So we'll run this again and we'll do the same thing as last time, just it'll actually show that our number is entered. So now it enters 15. And we can do this as many times as we wanted. And it's still going to work. It'll just keep saying, nice try, not an int, try again. And then we can enter an integer and it will work. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll put some awesome Java resources in the description, just some awesome books to check out and some of my other Java videos.